This morning's lesson comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 9 through 13. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, sisters and brothers. I hope this year's Thanksgiving was a blessing for us all. I hope that we all found reasons for our hearts to lift up praises, even as we spoke our prayers of thanksgiving. For all of us, walking the hard road of this unusual year, I hope that thanksgiving has opened the way for the joy that we celebrate at Christmas, that great gift of possibility that God has given to every whosoever willing to receive it, a gift that we remember when we think of an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, sleeping in a manger under the light of an improbable star. I am one of those people who tends to have some trouble with the winter holiday season, Thanksgiving through a few days into the new year, not because of the meaning of the days that we celebrate, but because of what our culture in this day and age tends to make of it. When you're a person who's always felt a bit like an outsider, like a stranger in the human family. The social message of overindulgence and overspending and hallmark or lifetime Christmas movie versions of the real meaning of Christmas and in case you've never suffered through any of those, those movies tend to say that the real meaning of Christmas means getting married, sometimes to a prince in disguise. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, when you're a person like I am, like this, this season at large, including most of the TV commercials, tends to remind you that, yes, you really are an outsider, and none of this is really for you. So, I've always hoped that this would get easier, the older and wiser that I got, but it hasn't. Not at all. In fact, the shorter my days become and my life becomes, the more precious every day is, and I realize there are too few of them ahead, even if there are decades ahead that's still too few. So it hasn't gotten any easier. And as a result, I've learned to really cherish Advent and its traditions. As we move toward Christmas Day with the joyful songs and the in excelsis deos, we look at the promises of God through the mouths and the pens of the prophets, many of which we Christians understand as having been fulfilled in Jesus. We also look toward the ultimate promises of God, promises of a world made new, a world of justice, which have yet to be fulfilled. During Advent every year, I meditate on the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, 
and every year. I hope that more eyes will be opened and that the light will do its work. Usually this weekend, the one between Thanksgiving and uh, the Sunday following, Will and I usually have scrambled a church if we've managed to find a couple of hours so that we can decorate the sanctuary for Advent. And usually, this first Sunday morning of this season, I'd be lighting the first blue candle on the Advent wreath, a candle which represents hope, light, driving the darkness of winter away, light that warms our hearts. But that's during a usual year. It goes without saying that we're hardly having a usual year this go-round. More than ever in my lifetime, we need these gifts of Advent. Hope, love, joy, and peace. Advent's promises are God's response to a dark world. God's response to fear and to uncertainty. In this year of disease and death, of food bank lines stretching for literal miles, of an economy on very shaky ground, all of us need to hear, Thus saith the Lord. And all of us need to know that these promises carry courage and strength for all who receive them with trusting hearts. In today's word from Isaiah, the message is a resounding, fear not. And maybe that's what the whole of Advent means. Fear not, written to a captive people. Through the prophet, God spells out the ways both God's presence and action in the lives of God's people serve as an antidote to fear. God promises to strengthen us to help us, and by way of God's own righteousness, to uphold us. The forces, or even the people, which seem to be arrayed against us, shall be as nothing. Those forces, or those people who think it's right for some of us to live under the crippling weight of shame, are destined to be themselves ashamed. And as nothing, or as the prophet puts it, as a thing of naught. They will ultimately lose their power over us. God has promised it. If we had to boil down the message of Advent into its core meaning, the living promise at the center of the traditions of this season, that message from God would indeed be, fear not. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, says the prophet. That great light which guides all people of faith is this. It is liberation from bondage to fear. Now, if perfect love that we have found in Christ Jesus casteth out all fear, that is a reason to rejoice every day of the year, amen? Not just on Christmas Day and not only in the days that make up this season of Advent. I do miss the candles that make the Advent wreath. I miss that sense of timelessness that these traditions give to us. But that word from God's own heart, Fear not, for I am with you. That is timeless in a much bigger way than Advent traditions. It is eternity itself whispering loving welcome to all of God's children. During Advent, the candles that we light all mean fear not. Hope gives us the strength to endure in spite of uncertainty and fearful days. Love gives us the power to transform our own lives, and if we make wise use of that love, it can give us the power to transform the world. Joy is the difference between surviving a difficult season and thriving in spite of the difficulties. And peace 
gives God's people in Christ, our Prince of Peace, our true power. A house built on rock, on steady ground, will not fall. In the same way, the peace that we find when we live in the way that Jesus taught us, when we follow where Creator, Christ, and Spirit are leading us, peace is the very strength that we need so that we will be steady and secure enough, actually, to love our enemies, to pray for those who despitefully use us, and to turn the other cheek. May this light of hope shine fearlessly from our lives this Advent season, and may our light bring a little courage to somebody else who needs it. May it be so. Amen. And Amen.